see a chair. We'll have to move them around. Yeah, I know. Good morning. Uh, I would like to call this meeting to order. Uh, my name is Amarjit Sohi. I'm the chair of uh, TIC. And to my left is Councillor Dave Loken and uh, Councillor Ed Gibbons. And uh, to my right, my good friend, Councillor Anderson, and wonderful Mayor, Mayor Mandel. All of us here. So we got a big agenda. So, anyways, adoption of the agenda. Councillor Anderson, you want to move the adoption of the agenda? I will move the adoption of the agenda for February 13. All in favor? That is carried. Adoption. Oh, you want us to use the the computers sure. system? Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Adoption of the minutes. Councilor Gibbons. Mine did not show. And I noticed I am here. I'll move the uh, adoption of minutes of January 30th, um, 2013 Transportation Committee. Please vote. Display the vote. Doesn't show on my system here. There we go. It still doesn't show Mayor Mandel. Right, right. Mandel's a yes. Yeah. I'm a yes. You don't have to show it, but just I don't know how I get to be. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Now I'm not here anymore. I'm here again. Here again, there again, not again. Is he okay. I'm here. Okay. Any protocol items? Seeing none, items selected for debate. Oh, Constant Gibbons. I'm going 7.2. Can you also exempt? 7.1 uh, for the Yeah, sure. 7.1. Can you also exempt 5.2? We need to change the date. 5.1, oh, 5, 5. sorry. 5.1 for the dates. Yeah. Okay. Uh, request to speak none, time specific none, inquiries, Mayor Mandel. Yes, um, I received um, several complaints in particular from businesses about uh, bike lanes and the consultation process. Um, I'd like an update as to uh, the consultation process, the impact of bike, bike lanes are having on, on communities. Um, as it is becoming something far more reaching than I think Council at once anticipated. Report back to TIC as to the status of it. As quickly as possible, because this is becoming a nightmare. Not that they're not a good idea, but it just seems that someone behind your scenes over there, Bob, has decided we're going to eliminate all vehicles and only have bikes. Okay. okay. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do also have an inquiry. And uh, that administration provide a report to Transportation and uh, Infrastructure Committee regarding the opportunity for City of Edmonton to recognize the sacrifice of our war veterans by offering free, offering free public transit, including DATS, on the Remembrance Day each year. This is from uh, myself, Councillor Dave Loken, and Councillor Ed Gibbons. Okay, so we're done with inquiries. Uh, we go to first item, 5.1. It's just a technical thing. We just need to change the date from uh, March 11th to March 13th, which is the TIC committee day. So we just need to move it, right, to change the I'll, date? I'll move that motion. So uh, please vote. Display the vote. That is carried. For some reason, I why? what is it that? Uh, so we'll just, why don't we just... Show board by hand, yeah. Okay. Okay, anyways. So the next one is 7.1, Mayor Mandel. That's your inquiry. Thank you. I don't need a, I don't need a presentation. Yeah. Um, I, guess, I guess the issue is more to do with, I, I don't see that you do, you say you do public consultation, but um, I think you do public, inf public information or public direction rather than saying that, well, what do you think about this? Because I can't imagine any business person wanting parking taken away from in front of their business saying, oh, this is a great idea. So um, that, that's the first question. What kind of consultation do you really do? Well, I, I'd, like, I'd like to uh, break this into a couple of different areas. Uh, we did review our processes uh, related to, uh, to the installation of new bus stops or changes to bus stops in developing areas. Um, and when, when we are considering bus stop modifications, there are a number of factors that, 
are taken into consideration. A few of those include safe transit operations, roadway operations, impacts on traffic, and also the impacts on adjacent business owners. Now, in terms of the process that you're talking about, we did, as a result of this inquiry, we did a review of, of what we go through and what we consider. Through the process, we did determine that uh, when considering permanent modifications or additions to bus stops, uh, we were fairly thorough in considering all factors. And that does include contacting uh, property owners, whether they're businesses, uh, residential property owners, uh, when there are situations where there are permanent modifications. And we do work with them. We try to mitigate uh, impacts. Uh, and we have had examples where we've come up with uh, solutions where uh, everybody uh, is satisfied with the results. Okay, thank you. Uh, part, part, Stop, okay. because I'm the one asking the questions. If you want, I didn't want to report. So then can you supply me with some information as to um, what, what, what ones you, you, con you consulted with the business and you made the changes? So you want to see some examples? Okay, not that, today. You can just send it to me. Okay, I'm not going to make any major motions about this. I'd like to see it because I really have difficulty. Um, uh, I have difficulty seeing when a business would have in front of it a place they can stop for 15 minutes. And say, oh God, let's get rid of that. It's of no use to me. I find that very shocking because I, as a business person, I would say that's one of the lifebloods I have. Um, number one. Number two. Um, you talk about in and out of a particular bus stop, and I look at. Uh, um, on 101st Street uh, by the, by the um, um, just north of the, you know, just south of the Bank of Montreal, there was three or four parking stalls and they've all disappeared. And that's a very easy pull in, pull out. This is on the east side of the road. And now those are all gone. Now you have a, a about, I don't know, 120 feet of, uh, of bus lane. So I'd like a report on that particular one, who you talked to and, and why, you, uh, why you eliminated the parking. There was about three or four parking stalls there. Well, you couldn't move them one way or the other. Um, I, I don't, and the same thing exists on 111th Avenue and uh, 101st Street. Those are two I know in particular. Um, so, I, you know, I, just to speak to this, I, I'm not going to ask for major change. I think, I think our transit does not consider the business people. I think they just, they just unilaterally make a decision to change stuff and then uh, and eliminate parking because the bus needs to be longer, shorter, fatter, wider. I don't know. I think business needs to be consulted and we need to leave those parking stalls available for people so that they can get in and out of businesses to pick up their prescriptions, pick up something quickly, um, uh, because there's not necessarily parking around the area. And so I think that's um, um, vitally important. Uh, so, I, you know, I'm, there's not a lot. I mean, I'm, I don't want to get in a major fight with the department about it, but we've lost sight of the importance of a car within the city of Edmonton, which is still better than 70% of the traffic. And if we continue to do that, we're going to lose business after business after business. We better start realizing there's more to this city than just finding a place for a bus to stop. There's also those business in the area and people use that. And that also goes to downtown. And downtown where you've you eliminated parking constantly on 102nd Street, where you used to have angle parking, you put uh, parallel parking, which means there's no parking for anybody. That's a lifeblood for those businesses to run in and out so they don't have to maybe, maybe go down, downstairs and park and pay $10 for, for a few minutes. Again, you don't care about the business, you care about minimizing certain things. So that's another example of which I will um, ask administration to go back with information as to about why they can't change the, the, par the parallel parking on 102nd Street to angle parking, which would allow more cars to park. So I, I just think, Mr. Boudelaire, there needs to be a change in the attitude of your department and really in your leadership of it because what's happening is there's too much dominance of, of, uh, of not that buses aren't important, because they really are, and the stops are very important, but understanding that people do drive a car. So I'll leave it at that, Mr. Chair. So, Mayor Mendel, on those two locations, you want a memo come yeah. to you? Or yeah, just, well, I think just or, come to me. And okay. uh, they right, said right. they did all this consultation. I'd like to who they talked to. Okay, good, all right. The businesses are mostly gone now because they went out of business. Oh. Okay, so anyone else have any questions on this? So anyone would like Receive to... Receive for information. Information, Receive all, all in favor? Display, I'm a, I'm a, display I, the vote. I just want, yes, to, I want to just voice my in opposition because I think they... Yeah, okay. It's more, more I think, the, the job they're doing. So it's not the report. But okay, I'm thank a, you. I'm opposed to it. Okay, so Mayor Mandel is opposed. Okay, thank you. 7.2. This is uh, your inquiry, Councillor Gibbons, right? 
Yes. Do you, you need a report? I need Is there a report on this? Or any uh, no opening remarks? Presentation. There is? Okay, good. No presentation. There is no presentation. Okay. okay. I All will right. ask questions now. Councilor Gibbons, go ahead. So, Ms. Latte, are you, I'm asking you or I'm asking the gentleman beside me? Councilor Gibbons, I have uh, beside me Jason Melista, who leads our uh, conceptual planning for major road projects. So, both of us will answer questions as we can. Okay. I, you know, you, you get what I'm trying to drive at, but the fact is, are we can we not go from 17th Street and the engineering and everything up to where the green line is where Anthony Hendy, um, <coughs> we need to have, you're not really answering the question whether or not, how much is it going to affect our um, garbage trucks and everybody get, trying to get into the waste management. It's, you're, I know you're working with, going to have to work with AIMCO and whatever and they'll give access, but will it, this help it if we had this road through sooner? No. Um, the existing roads as they uh, are used for access to the Culver Bar dump will remain in open. Um, there will be impacts to Yellowhead Trail, so for the trucks traveling east and west along Yellowhead Trail, there will be delays. But uh, as, as is referenced in the report, if uh, Orem Road was built and extended um, in order to be able to use it to its full, full advantage in terms of trying to provide an alternate route for access into the area, Anthony Hende would have to be constructed and complete. Um, one of the things that uh, the Northeast Hende P3 contractor has is he's got a firm deadline to have it done by November of 2016. There isn't necessarily any kind of benefit for them to open up segments of the road early. And we saw that with the Northwest when they built that. It was basically open in one shot, all in one time. So we're not anticipating any kind of early openings for the 130th Avenue interchange on Northeast Anthony Hende. Okay, you're, you're not talking to the converted engineer, you're talking okay. to the person who represents people out there yep. and trying to get businesses in the ORM site and trying to get access into waste management. I don't, I don't, um, I don't want to be embarrassed like we were on 66th Street when your department had money for two years prior to getting 66th Street done and the province made us look bad. Why aren't we working and trying to be finishing at November 2016, the same time they are, with the road. I know what's going to happen. It's going to be no different 66th Street. It's, it'll be done somewhere in the future. All of it takes two years. The winter is coming in. We put people on a cow pasture for a while, and then we might do the road. I, I'm just, it gives you enough time to move up the engineering, not 2015-16, but get the engineering done now. Work. So, Councillor Gibbons, to answer that, um, you're right, we, we don't have the funding like we had ahead of time for 66th Street, so that's one additional obstacle in this particular case. We anticipate the road would be there and open in 2016, so how do we engineer and, and get funding to build the road so that it's open at the same time the interchange is open? We recognize we have to do a little bit of engineering earlier. Um, we're already working on possible uh, revisions to our budget to at least provide or get some engineering money in for Orem Road. But fundamentally, we will likely need to make a decision either just prior to the next capital budget or with the 2015 capital budget to put funding into this road to actually make it happen. So that, that's a decision that's yet to come with, with Council. So is it Council making a motion here to make sure it's going to be in the capital, next capital, so we're not caught yeah. our, our intent to put the prelim engineering into the capital budget adjustment is already moving forward so that's intended to be in front of council in April so my suggestion would be that would be the place council raises it and if you're not satisfied with just the engineering um, that's the time to, to look at at other uh, suggestions because right now we are really really tight there are many projects that require um, and, and emerging projects that require attention. This is only one of them. So at that time of the, the SBA is, is really where it should come up. So going back to your report, the, the fact is you're, it's only one of many in the city, but we seem to be always one step behind, whether it's um, um, 34th Street on the south side or 66th Street on the north side or the west end. We should 
like we should be coming in and explain to council which ones are the main priority. We can decide whether something's get moved up, but if you give us a priority list of what ones that are needed for the Anthony Hende and or other areas can compare with, then we can decide on that. Is that not the way you should look at it? And it's a topic we were just talking as recently as yesterday about. We, we need to provide council with some information on some updates on our arterial program, including the connections to Hende. So we will do that, or we intended to do that, either through a report or through a memorandum to council within the next month. Well, I look at, it's not just for access to the waste management. We have an Orem um, industrial site that can bring in a lot of taxes if we, and you know, we don't get any help from our neighbors in Strathcona with 232 or 33rd Street Northeast. You know, they play the game whether or not anybody can have access off that road. So we, we need access off the Orm, but we also need access from uh, moving this through. In negotiations that uh, or talking with um, the, the county of Strathcona and the way the province has dictated to them if they're going to move forward with the Bremner, um, uh, the new Sherwood Park site, this road is required. And they, it's being bumped by the province from what, four lanes to eight lanes is what it's, it's going to be? It's proposed to be ultimately protected for six lanes. We don't project anything probably more than four for the short term anyways. So up to six? Yep. Okay. Well, I'll wait until April, but I think that this is um, more than just one of the sites in the uh, city of Edmonton. It's a, it's a, it's a draw for uh, lots of taxes. So, and we kind of live on taxes. Thank you. Thank you. So the issue at hand is this portion between 9th Street and 17th Street on Orem Road, right? That's where uh, that will not be connected once, once the hand day is finished, right? Well, we would certainly like to see it connected. Yeah. There's no funding to do that it. And, and it's actually a fairly costly piece because there's a deep ravine okay. that it has to cross uh, west of 17th Street. But the other other portion, the daughter portion, will be developed by the developers, built by developers by 2013, 2014. So this is the only little piece. I don't know how big it is, right? But uh, you said it's costly. But are you going to come back to us in April with uh, some sort of uh, That's correct. And, and there's nothing to suggest if the developers in there wanted to proceed, you know, that, that would be excellent. It would solve many problems. But again, it's all about funding and ability to do that within the, the, so, what they've got. So you will... You'll come to council in April for some design money for this or to do some design? Right money? now the administration has it as, a, as some additional design money, not yeah. to do the full design, but at yeah. least keep us ahead of the curve. That's what we're suggesting would be part of one of our small budget adjustments to make. Okay. Okay, Council Gibbons, you want to? Mr. Lyon, we're, we're the developer on that section. There's no other developer except the city of Edmonton on that. I, I meant holistically all landowners in Orem, oh. um, not, not just one particular owner. Yeah, yeah but, but they're paying for theirs up to the 17th. They're paying part of 17th. It's the section that's all on the city's land. So let's get this straight. In between 9 and 17, it's all city land. So it might not be your department, but it's... All land in the Orem area contributes to all of the roads. The city is a part of that. That's correct, yes. Thank you. I'll move the report for, uh, received for information. Thank you. Okay, so all in favor for receiving 7.2 for information, please vote. Display the vote. All in favor? Here we go. It's carried. All right. Any notes or motions? None so whatsoever. We are adjourned. Tony, welcome. <laughs>